It was another calm and quiet day near the wintry village of Evergreen Town. Snowbell and Bernie had just returned from gathering some lumber to use for Bernie's workshop. Bernie, being a woman of large frame and impressive strength, carried the lumber above her shoulder with relative ease, whereas Snowbell, who possessed a thinner, more gentle figure, carried a smaller pile of lumber with both arms. The two were in the middle of a discussion as they made their way back to the village. Even after all that, Snowball still didn't learn his lesson. Well, he learned not to wear wool overalls after that, if nothing else. I swear that boy's about as dense as... But their conversation was cut short as they heard a sudden commotion upon returning to town. What the Sam Hill? There was a large gathering of other snow people, mostly the men of the village, admiring something in the town square. The crowd, however, was too packed to make out exactly what they were enamored by. There's sure a lot of people gathering around the square. Uh, hey, Cletus, what's going on? Well, some new girl just showed up, and oh boy, she's a regular bombshell. I bet she'd even give you a run for your money in terms of looking pretty, Snowbell. Uh, oh? Uh, that's, a uh, that's nice, I guess. I didn't know there was a contest. <sighs> All right, Casanova, step aside <gasps> so we can see this new girl. Bernie began to clear a path through the crowd for herself and Snowbell, determined to see just what the source of all this commotion was. Make way, you drooling pack mules! Go on, get! The two snow women eventually made it to the town square so they could finally see for themselves what everyone was admiring. It was a strange new woman who was clearly enjoying the adoration she got from her observers. She was covered in brown and cream-colored scales, from the tips of her fins to her more humanoid limbs. She had long brown hair that hung down to her back and golden yellow eyes. Her outfit, which consisted of a loosely buttoned-up green top and Daisy Duke shorts, left very little for the imagination. That's right, boys. Drink it all in. But no shoving. There's plenty of Venus for everyone. Ah, she really is pretty. And really full of herself. Must not be from around here. Well, I should at least be polite and say hi to her. <clears throat> Howdy there, neighbor. My name's Snowbell, and I want to give you a nice welcome to Evergreen Town. Uh, well, hey! My nose! Thanks for the snack, Snowcone. I've been feeling peckish. Uh, what kind of person does something like that? Don't worry, hon. I got you covered. Bernie pulled out another baby carrot from a pouch on her belt labeled Spare Noses. She gently pushed the carrot onto Snowbell's face and then went to confront the rude woman. Now look here, you little trout. Y'all can't just go taking people's noses like that. Who do you think you- Hey! Ugh, that one's gone bad. You should take better care of your crops, Granny. And uh, now, Bernie, uh, let's be a bit more hospitable than that. Snowbell took notice of the strange necklace she wore. The arms of an octopus cradled a glimmering glowing emerald in its center. Ooh, that's a pretty necklace he got there, miss. Oh, this thing? Got it from a water sage over at the Mediterranean. It clashes with my wardrobe, but it also makes it so I can survive in climates that are too harsh for me. Well, if it's too cold for you, what are you even doing here? I wanted to take a little vacay from my job and do some globe trotting, And I figured some snow would be a nice change of pace from the glitzy lifestyle of Venice. Well, if there's anything we can do to help you feel more at home, just let us know. Yeah, yeah, uh thanks, but I'm good. Don't suppose one of you cute little snowmen know where I can find a place to unpack, would you? Oh, gee, that didn't take much. Come on, Belle. We got better things to do than seeing a bunch of fools drooling over some woman they just met. As the two snow women left to return to their task, Snowbell turned to look at Venus and her crowd of followers. She didn't know why someone so rude would attract so much affection, even if she was beautiful. There was more to her than she was letting on, and Snowbell couldn't figure out what. It had been a few days since Venus came to the village, and the other snowmen were still fawning over her just as much as they did when she first arrived. Snowbell felt like she needed to talk to someone, see if there was something she was missing to really understand this new woman. Fortunately, she spotted her older brother Snowball leaving the town store. 
He had bought himself a few chocolate bars that he intended to eat before being interrupted by a sudden tap on his shoulder. Hey, Bobby! Well, I didn't do it, I swear it! Oh, it's just you. <laughs> Trying to sneak some chocolates behind our big sister's back again? <laughs> well, she says I gotta watch my weight, but I'm a darn snowman! Why should I worry about calories and whatnot? Oh, beats me. Hey, Bali, can I ask you something? Mm -hmm. What do you think of that Venus lady that showed up earlier? Why do you care? It's just that ever since Venus came into town, everybody's been gawking over her. I can't put my finger on it, but there's something about Venus that seems a bit... odd. <laughs> Sis, are you telling me you're jealous of that fish lady? <laughs> what? I'm not jealous, I'm just... <laughs> At least you're actually showing an emotion that ain't... Oh, I'm so happy, happy, dappy. Nothing bad ever happens to me. Otherwise, I might actually frown for a change. <laughs> no, I knew I should have asked Flaky instead. Right, big sis? <laughs> You're talking crazy, sis. That shriveled old snow prune ain't here. Holy! What did I tell you about eating those stupid chocolates? Get back into the house, you roly-poly <laughs> Yes, big sister? Now what's this about y'all being jealous of that fish lady? I'm not jealous, but... <sighs> Something about her just rubs me the wrong way, and it bothers me that everyone is falling for someone so self-centered or manipulative like her so easily. I don't know. Maybe I am jealous, but I can't shake the feeling there's more to her that she ain't telling anyone. Ha! Y'all think those drooling morons care if there's more to her or not? They only like her because she's just some skimpy piece of woman strutting around showing off her goo-goo eyes and her shapely body. Land's sake! Those fools would probably pay a king's ransom just to get a kiss from her. Oh, wait a tick. A few hours later, Snowflake had set up a booth in the town square. A kissing booth, to be more specific. Folks were lining up to receive a kiss from the beautiful Venus, while Snowflake was making a profit off the poor love-struck snowman. All right, folks, no shoving. You'll all get a chance to lock lips with our soldier little friend as long as y'all be sure to pay up. <laughs> Ooh, look at all that cash. <laughs> uh, 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 my scam, my scratch. Don't get too attached to all that scratch, Winter Raisin. I'm expecting my cut of it, too. Uh, hey! Ain't the pure thrill of community service enough a reward for you? Yeah, nice try. I want 50%. Ugh, it was my idea to set this up. Y'all can settle with 20. Yeah, but it's my lips all these icicle hicks are wanting a taste of. What, you think all these boys are lining up for you? <laughs> yeah, right. 50. 25. 50. 28, and I'll give you Bali's entire chocolate stash. What? Does this look like a body that eats chocolate? I'll tell you what. I'll settle for 45. Seeing the look on your sister's face when she sees this can compensate. <laughs> ah, you got a deal. Oh, you sure know how to drive a bargain, Venus. Dang straight I do. All right, cuties. Who's next? Hmm. There's definitely something about that girl. Later that evening, Snowbell was sitting out by the frozen lake a few yards from her home. She stared down at her reflection, still trying to process how everyone has been acting ever since Venus arrived. Just then, a penguin wallowed up to Snowbell's side and rubbed his head against her arm. Amused by this display of affection, she returned the gesture and began scratching his head. Hmm, hey, you pearly. Do y'all think I'm getting too worked up over this whole Venus thing? Uh huh? <sighs> I don't know. I just wish I knew what the dung deal was with her. So, this is where you live, huh? Well, good thing nobody knows where this village is. Otherwise, you'd give a lot of visitors sore eyes. Oh. Hi, Venus. Aw, don't worry, sugar. I'm not gonna stick around for much longer. I thought a quiet little town like this would have been a nice vacation spot. But I didn't expect it to be so... So what? 
Look, they're all nice and junk, but boy, are they out of touch. I mean, I'm used to guys drooling all over me, but these hicks act like they've never seen a woman before they saw me. Well, aside from you, your shriveled up sister, and that pink snow gorilla. <laughs> Is that so? But yeah, tomorrow I'm gonna ditch this winter wasteland and find a vacay spot that's a bit more stimulating. So you don't have to keep being jealous anymore, Snowcone. Your place as queen of the snowbrain shall remain unopposed. Not like that's a title worth fighting for. <sighs> Venus, I just want to know, why do you behave the way you do? Acting all haughty and vain just to get what you want. There's better ways to get attention than just walking around acting and looking like this. You think I'm doing this for attention? Like I need a bunch of gawking men to feel better about myself? Have you ever considered that maybe I do this for myself? Not everyone can be content being a wholesome little schoolgirl like you. Well, what's your problem then? All we've done is try and act nice and hospitable, and you still got that chip on your shoulder. Look, I could care less if you wear that cute little outfit, or even nothing at all. Whatever point you're trying to prove ain't gonna do you any good in the long run. Point? Oh, you think you suddenly know everything about me, huh? You don't know what I've been through, Snowcone. I'm not acting the way I am to prove anything. I'm doing it because it's how I survived. And I'm not gonna stand here and be judged by Flander and Elsa's love child. I'm just saying, there's plenty of ways you do that without having to be such a bully. B a bully? Oh, I am not taking this from some... some... Some goody two shoes church bake sale hick who's been stuck in this winter wasteland all her life! Uh, Venus, calm down! You don't get to judge how people act in the real world until you actually see it for yourself! And I couldn't care less what you or the rest of these frostbitten hillbillies think about me! Ah! Uh, Tell your stupid bird to get off of me! Uh, oh, I'm so sorry! He's usually not this aggressive! Despite Snowbell's best efforts, she was having a hard time pulling the aggressive penguin off of Venus. And during the struggle, he had yanked off Venus's amulet with his beak. No! Snowbell was finally able to pry Pearly off of her, but as he was suddenly lifted away, he lost his grip on the amulet. It flew out of his beak and landed in the center of the frozen lake. I know you were trying to protect me, but that's not how you... Uh, uh, Venus, what's wrong? Your, your stupid penguin took my amulet and tossed it in the lake. Oh no, I'm so sorry about this, Venus. Hang on, I'll get it. Thinking fast, Snowball ran to the giant tree next to the lake and ripped off some of the bark to create some makeshift skates. With a running start, she skated across the frozen lake toward the amulet. She crouched low to grab it, and then turned around to head back to Venus, who was barely clinging to life without the amulet's warmth. Snowbell quickly placed the amulet around Venus's neck, and stepped back to give her some space. After a moment, Venus slowly began to stop shivering. As she finally stopped, she slowly looked up to the worried Snowbell, with a scared and confused look in her eye. You... you got it back? After everything I said? You still tried to save me. Why? I couldn't just let you end up as a frozen fish stick. Nobody deserves that. Not even you. <laughs> How can you still be so nice to me? After everything I've done? I I've been a total jerk to you. To everyone here. Hell, even I would hate myself after what I've done. Well... It's because it's how I've survived. And I know that underneath all that hardiness, there's still a good person somewhere deep down. And that person deserves some love, just as much as anyone else. <laughs> Why does something so corny sound so natural coming from you? Look, Snow Co Snow Bell. I'm sorry. For everything. I've been through a lot of stuff. I've been pushed down by a lot of people, and over time, I learned that you sometimes have to push back. But sometimes I push back at the wrong people. 
and I never really had any friends to set me straight. Well, any real friends, anyway. <coughs> Easy there, buddy. I I'm not ready for snow hugs just yet. But I do appreciate it. I think maybe I should head out now. Oh, had enough of us snow yokels. I just think I messed around in your little Santa village long enough. Yeah, I guess there's only so much y'all can do in this winter wasteland, eh? All right, all right, I get it. God, way to ruin the moment. Listen, before you head out, how about y'all head back to town and we treat you to a nice lunch? So I can take some time to get to really know a little Miss Venus. Well, it's not like I'm in a big hurry to leave. Just please tell me you have something better to eat than those nasty carrots. <laughs> Don't worry. Bunny and I will take care of you. Once the two returned to the village, Snowbell and Bernie prepared a hearty salad for the three girls to share. And during their meal, Venus began to open up to the two snow women and talk about her job and her travels. She even apologized to Bernie for her rude behavior after telling her exactly what she told Snowbell earlier. After dinner, Venus began to pack her things so she could set out to catch a plane back home. Snowbell and the other snow people went with her to the edge of the village to see her out. Well, I hope you enjoyed your stay, Venus. Don't be afraid to come back anytime you want. Well, I probably won't be coming back for a while, but I'll think it over. Bye, Venus. <laughs> all right, boys, simmer down. You're all going to be fine without me. But don't forget that you still have your own little gem here. Sure, she doesn't have the bod that I have. Then again, who does? But she's pretty all right in her own way. Please don't. Uh, sorry. Well, I'll see you snow babies some other day. Wait up, Venus! I almost forgot to give you something. Give me something? Snowbell took off her mittens and closed her hands together. She closed her eyes to focus as a soft, frosty mist escaped from the cracks between her fingers. Then, she opened her eyes and separated her hands to reveal a small ice sculpture in the shape of a dolphin. Just a little something to remind you that no matter how hard life pushes you, and how hard you push back, you still have a friend who'll be there if you need one. Thanks, Snowbell. Eh, might as well return the favor. Venus knelt down to open up her suitcase and pulled out an attractive-looking tank top to give to the snow woman. I have plenty of better-looking tops back home, and I figured it wouldn't hurt to spice up your wardrobe a bit. Oh, ain't this a cute-looking shirt? Thanks, buddy. <laughs> well, you take care of yourself and these snowheads, Espy. And y'all have yourself a safe trip back home, Venus. Venus then set out, going wherever her sense of adventure was leading her. As she walked away from the winter village, she looked down at the dolphin sculpture in her hand and smiled. While she knew that she'd never fully changed who she was, it felt reassuring to know that someone was willing to befriend her despite her first impression. And Snowbell, in turn, knew that there was still a decent person deep down in Venus. Someone who deserved to have a friend.